the ten rows gets the girl, right? Right. Good. Now, name the opera where a baritone gets the girl. Huh? <laughs> I got him. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's a trick question. Don Giovanni. He gets all the girls, right? Mamma mia. Hey, what a kid your age knows about opera puts an old aficionado like me to shame. Hey, you mean that, Donatusa? That was a tough question. And how come, if I'm such an expert, you didn't believe me last time when I told you that I was ready for the Continental Opera Company? <laughs> Tino, I've told you. The Continental... The Continental Opera Company, Tino, that's the mecca. The brass ring, you're good, Tino, but you're not that good, at least not yet. Exactly. Hey, I'll, I'll keep... keep footing the bill until me and nobody else but me decides that you're ready. Hey, when the time comes. When the time comes. When you're really ready, Tino, I can get you in just as well as anybody else, huh? Mamma mia. This kid's got a good set of ears, huh? You remember everything. <laughs> Don Artuso. How much money would you say you've invested in me over the past three years? I don't know. Ten, eleven thousand dollars, maybe? You know, Don Artuso, in some circles, many would consider you a foolish man. And I know how you feel about looking foolish. That's why I'm offering you an early return. Oh? I'll buy your shares from you, right now, for $12,500. Now, you might think a yield like this is peanuts, but a note on the larynx, a bad notice in the New York Times, and believe me, you'll be damn glad that you got out when you did. What do you say? I say, uh, where does a kid like Tino Mariano come up with that kind of money? How do you come up with yours? Ah. So you want out of your contract, that Dino? All right, you're out. <laughs> Just like that? <laughs> yes, but there's a special clause in your contract. Special clause? Yeah. The shotgun clause. You little bastardo. How dare you make me play Barrabatio Giaconda? Huh? Believe me, Tino, I can hurt you in more ways than Poncielli ever dreamed of. Poncielli wrote the music. Boito wrote the libretto. That's it. Rub it in, you assassino. You want to sing, huh? All right, you sing. When and where I tell you. And don't worry about being able to open up your throat. The next time you get fresh with me, I'll open it for you. <laughs> Chimico. You know what that means? Chemistry. And that's what it's going to be now between me and the camera. Chimico. Vic, look, you've got to face the facts. They are going to sell Ed Cole hot and heavy to that client. The phone is going to ring and I'm going to say good choice. I good choice talent agency. How may I help you? Is that them? No smoking in the office. Tell him he's a nut. Tell him about the time that he, he showed up for that fish sticks commercial wearing full scuba gear. No, I haven't heard anything yet, but uh, this is a bad time, actually. Let me call is you back. Is that it? Put it on the speaker. Put it on the... Stop it. Uh, no, that's just a pest. Now, listen, leave it to me, okay? All right. Goodbye, Ed. Maroon. Vic, you know, you're an actor, so this is redundant, but I'm going to say it anyway. You're a child. Now, now, please be a good little boy and share your toys. Fine. I'll call them myself. Wait a minute. Do you see this, my golden man? My pride, my joy, the man in my life. Do you know how I got this? Yeah, you were working for the National Film Board. Uh, some short film about dancing dots. I saw the thing. Didn't get it. No, that's not how I got it. I got it because I managed a group of people who all stayed together on the same page. No matter what their squabbles or differences or tensions were, they all cast them aside for the sake of the greater good. And now you want to poison those waters. Is that what you want to do? Or is this personal? Is this personal against me? Is that what it is? What? 
Look, Vic, I, I hear those jokes you do about me behind my back. She put the star in starving. Well. Now, are you trying to stab me by, by going after some nice but nutty guy because he stole one of your girlfriends? Short. Well, you forgot to mention, he's pretty, he's pretty short. I mean... You know, you go right ahead and do this. I'm not going to stop you, but I am going to stop being your agent. Oh. Jeannie, I, I don't expect you to understand. It's an Italian thing. All right. Ciao. You know what's happened? The impossible. You stop, you stop chasing Giovanna. No, no, the other impossible. We're seeing one another. You're drunk. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am drunk. On love. I tell you, Arturo, this is it. I thought the last time was it. And the time before that. All my life, Arturo, all my life, I have dreamed of this moment. Tonight, my cafe, after closing. The ring, Arturo. The ring? Yes, yes, that magnificent, beautiful, one-of-a-kind ring. You haven't sold it, have you? No. Name your price, Arturo. Anything. The sky's the limit. You got time for a story? <laughs> no. I had an uncle once. He went to prison. You want to know why? No, no, no. I want to know where the ring is. I'm going to tell you. Sit down. Sit. This uncle went to France. He broke into the Louvre. World's stupidest art thief. How stupid? He didn't take anything. He broke in so he could hang one of his own paintings. Everybody thought he was a nut. Think about it. A lousy painter, but he lived long enough to see one of his paintings hanging in the Louvre. Great story, right? But when you really think about it, what did he see? A mediocre painting hanging in a great gallery. You don't get it. It's a marvelous ring, Enzo. The best I ever made, but certainly not worthy of Giovanna. So I, I can't let you have the ring. Otherwise, stupidity runs in my family. So what was so important that I had to rush her all across town? Something about Kathleen? Well, um, sort of. Sort of. What do you think? I don't know. It's uh, it's nice, kind of flashy, but you know, basic. It's, it's nice. Oh, I get it. Is that what this is about? You're starting to sell these things, and I'm your guinea pig? No. <laughs> I want you to marry me. Again. <laughs> Marsha, you can't be serious. I'm definitely serious. I love you. You want us to get married again? Why? Why? Well, uh, because one, I uh, can't hold a job. <laughs> Two, I'm constantly broke. And three, I have no self-esteem whatsoever. All these years in sales. And that's your pitch. See, that's the thing. It's not a pitch. Pitching, I am through with. I can never find the right product to pitch anywhere. It's like that fortune cookie, you know, that I was always on about is a blind man truly reflected in the mirror. Well, I couldn't see what was in the mirror, which was me. And I'm not going to spend the rest of my life casting what's left of that in front of the Joe Reagans of the world just so they can trample all over me like an oriental rug. This is so funny. All the times you came over to my place and told me that 
I should learn how to be really myself, and I had to stop putting myself through all these things. You know, secretly all the time, I was, I was thinking the same thing about you. So, this is the latest hoop you want me to jump through. Polly talked the family into allowing him to avenge the attempted assassination of Rocco. Posing as an insurance salesman, Polly met a representative of the La Rosa family after hours in a local restaurant. Unbeknownst to the intended victim, the vendettas had hidden a gun in the establishment's restroom. And uh, I really think that you should sign this policy now. I don't know, I gotta think about it first. Well, believe me, now would be a really good time. <laughs> how about how about I give you some time to think about it while I uh, go to the bathroom? For this? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. thanks. No bra, I was really freaked out when I found that instead, man. <laughs> I tried to use it as a bong. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Right on. about you in there. So have you signed the policy? Yeah, I did. Oh good. 